Let me get to some calls before I get on out of here for the show today because I like to take my calls. 888-SAS-5303. That's 888-727-5303. Let's go to Damon in Iowa. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Damon? How are you? And what up, Stephen A.? Talk to me. What's up? All right, so I got a question for you. Well, I, hold on. I would assume you had a damn question, didn't you, call? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, come yeah. on, man. Let's go. All right. All right. You think Caleb Williams is a fraud? No, I don't. Um, he can ball. We all know he can ball. They've lost five of their last six games at USC. I get that, and there's a lot of reasons to malign Caleb Williams, but his skills are undeniable. Make no mistake about that. I do. I will say this. The pedigree of USC quarterbacks is something to bring into question. Matt Leinert didn't pan out, even though I think he's a great announcer, and I wish him all the, all the best with the work that he's doing on Fox. Uh, Mark Sanchez, obviously Sam, uh, you know, uh, Sam, uh, Sam Donald. Uh, those USC quarterbacks haven't panned out too well. The last quarterback that's really panned out and had a good career in the National Football League that departed from USC was Carson Palmer. So for me... I would tell you there's reasons for this cause for pause. There's reason for trepidation. But in the end, I'm going to tell you that I would say, yo, this is what I would do. I would just leave it alone and be like, give Caleb Williams a chance because the athleticism, the arm, the body type, et cetera, he seems to have all the pieces to really, really pull this off. Appreciate you, man. Danny in Wisconsin, you're live with Stephen A. What's up, Danny? Talk to me. Stephen A. Smith, uh, when you think about the GOAT of sports, you think about Mike with six, Brady with seven rings, but where do you rank a guy like Lightning McQueen with seven Piston Cups? Hmm. I would tell you he wouldn't be the GOAT. How are you going to be the GOAT? Because you're talking about the movie Cars, right? You're talking about the movie Cars, right? I mean, when you talk yeah, about Strip the King Weathers and, and, and Lightning McQueen, they're both tied with seven Piston Cups. Strip Weathers, you've got about him? How can you be oh, the go to go? You got somebody that's tied with that. you. You got somebody that's tied with you. Sorry, that ain't gonna work. Well, I know you tried to catch me with that. You didn't think I knew that about that. You didn't think I knew no, about no, cars, hey, did hey, you? When you think, you think about, okay. you just, think you about slept on a brother. Though, you slept on a brother. Pits and cups. He's got 28 circuits. He got 28 circuits under his Strip belt too. Strip Weathers has seven piston cups. I am not about to sit here and argue with a grown ass man about the movie cars. Oh come on now, Strip Steve. Weathers has seven piston cups. You should have brought me somebody that didn't have as many piston cups. Old engine cars. Yo, man. Let's talk about guy Lady McQueen. That's like that's like comparing him to Jerry Danny, West era. You Danny, can't, you can't. Danny, how old are you? I'm 21, Stephen. You're 21. Okay, well, you're still a young man. You're, you're a young man. Uh, what about Fast and Furious? You watch that movie? Yeah, Fast and Furious. Good uh, film. Uh, did you like which one? Did you like better, five, six, or seven? I mean, eight, nine, and ten are good uh -huh. too. But which one did you like better, five, six, or seven? Because I like five to seven. Five. You like five? five? That, that, was yeah. with, that was with Vin Diesel and, and The Rock going at it when The Rock was trying to hunt him down and all of that other stuff. What I'm saying to you is I think you picked the right one because I liked five a lot. I really, really did. My point is if you're going to argue with me about something, how about it not be an animated movie like Cars? How about it be something like Fast and Furious? I would have appreciated the Stephen question a, better. Cars is as real to little kids as much you're as You're not a little kid! You. You're 21! You would, you would have a point if you were seven years old calling me. You're 21 years old. What are you doing, wearing a diaper? <laughs> Goodbye, man. Nick, you're live with Stephen A. Nick from Michigan. What's up? How you doing, Stephen A.? Talk to me, man. My question of the day is, is Jared Goff a top-tier quarterback in the National Football League? He's playing like one. He's playing like one. I think when you look at the Detroit Lions right now, they got the second best record in the NFC. They're the number two seed right now. You can't deny what you've seen him do. Even though he didn't have the greatest game last week against Chicago, he still came back and won that game after, uh, you know, Justin Fields was sitting on, standing on the sidelines, dancing and all of this stuff like they had the game won. That was a foolish move on his part. But Dave Campbell has done a tremendous job with them. Hutchinson is no joke on the defensive side of the ball. They are not the team that they once were. The culture has been changed. Jared Goff deserves a lot of credit for what we're seeing him do. Um, so I would tell you he's playing like one now, but if you want to get that stature as consider, being considered one of the great quarterbacks, I need you to do that over a sustained period of time. I need you to show some degree of longevity and consistency rather than being a one-hit wonder. That's what I would say to you. Now, since week 9 or 10 of last week, he's been playing lights out for the most part, but the second I believed in him, I had a lot of faith in him. I had him in a, as an MVP candidate, if you remember, and then they went to Baltimore and got their ass kicked. And so that... Yeah. 
yep. that ticked me off. You know, when you get when you when you called upon to show up and you don't do that. So that was it with me. But I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for the call. Call back anytime. John in uh, uh, Michigan. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, John? How are you? What's up, man? I'm good. How are you? Stephen I'm good, a? man. Thank you for calling. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned our first take on Monday with the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp that uh, Brock Purdy just has all the time in the world to sit back in the pocket. I said that last game. I said that last game. That That was last game. You said that for last game. Yes. Man, in reality, he's had he's had not just last game, but throughout the season, the metrics seem to show that he has a bottom 10 O-line as it pertains to pass blocking. So, so the simple question I have for you is, why are you hating on our guy Brock? Well, I'm not, well first, of all, Tom, I, Tom, first of all, stop with the hating. That's a weak-ass question, and we have to stop this because the second somebody agree, disagrees with something, they're hating. We can have a discussion without bringing up the word hate. I'm not hating on him. I got the San Francisco 49ers winning the Super Bowl, bro. If Trent Williams is healthy, if Debo Samuels is healthy, is I, if Iuke and George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey are healthy, which Kyle Shanahan still calling the plays, and they have a quarterback as opposed to losing four quarterbacks in one season like they did last year. I got the San Francisco 49ers winning it all. So I don't want to hear about the hating. What I'm saying about Brock Purdy is that when they were gone, they were going through that three-game losing streak. When he was out there without Debo and without Trent Williams, he resembled a shell of himself. And if everything has to be ideal in order for him to perform, then that, that brings up the subject of greatness. We know that Brock Purdy can ball. We saw him in college. We see him as, you know, Mr. Irrelevant being the last dude in the NFL draft. We get all of that. We saw what he did in replacement of a Trey Lance and a Jimmy Garoppolo. There's no doubt about that, but the end, yeah. at the end yeah. of the day, he still has to show up when it really, really counts and show us that in, in situations that are not ideal, we can rely on seeing him be the same person that he was. Perfect example is last night when we watched Patrick Mahomes throwing that football. Okay. We know Kansas yeah. City lost the game, right? But we saw Valdez yeah. Scantlin drop that pass. There's not a solo Live that, bring, that blames Patrick Mahomes for what happened. We know who the fault was. I'm yep. saying Brock yep. Purdy has to make sure that when situations are not ideal, at the very least, we don't get to look at him and say, he couldn't do this or he couldn't do that. That's all I'm saying. Okay. He has to show Okay. That. Hey, now, now, you mentioned Jared Goff just a minute ago was a top tier quarterback. Where are you putting I, Brock Purdy uh, on, on that list on, with on. Jared Goff? Hold on. I did not say he was a top-tier quarterback, though. Caller asked me, was he? And I said, this season he has been, but I'm not giving you that status unless you show me you can do it with a degree of consistency. So if you heard that part of the discussion, how come you didn't add the other part? You're trying to be slick here. Don't try to catch me. This is Stephen A., baby. Talk to Stephen A. Uh, hey, you know what I'm I know what the you, hell man. I say. Appreciate you. Okay? All thank right. you. Have a nice day. Let's go to you Rob too. in Pennsylvania. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Rob? Talk to me. Stephen A., thanks for taking my call. My you pleasure. talked about family turmoil. I'm going to Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin, this summer, he didn't get his contract extension like everyone thought he was supposed to. Today, he said, I take responsibility. It was me. I fired Matt Canada. Jerry Dulac, he comes out in an article, says, no, it was Rooney. Is there turmoil between the Roonies and Mike Tomlin? No, there's no turmoil. I mean, Mike Tomlin hasn't had a losing season in his 16 years in Pittsburgh. Um, the reality is, is that Mike Tomlin made a mistake because he held on to Matt Canada entirely too long. Matt Canada hasn't gotten the job done since he arrived. And a lot of times they were leaning on Big Ben Roethlisberger because they knew he was a statue in his last days in Pittsburgh. He was immobile, couldn't move, couldn't evade the pocket, couldn't evade path on oncoming pass rushes, all of that other stuff. But you had to deal with him because he was a future Hall of Famer. And you had to show him the deference and respect that he deserved. And so as a result, they had to deal with that. But what we didn't pay enough attention to is the fact that Matt Canada is not innovative. Uh, he's not that innovative or creative as a play caller. A matter of fact, he was pretty transparent and predictable, which Nazi Harris alluded to just the other day, which George Pickens alluded to when he was caused an acrimony because he wasn't satisfied with the amount of targets he was receiving. We understand that there's still a, the, the, the jury is still out on Kenny Pickett, but in the end, we all knew from last year that Matt Canada wasn't the answer. And for Matt, Mike Tomlin to be hesitant in making that move, that is the indictment against him. I believe Mike Tomlin when he says he made the move because I think that it got to a point where the players were looking at him with a raised eyebrow. To know him is to love him and to have profound respect for him. But it's also, he's, Mike Tomlin was famous about saying the standard is the standard. But he violated that by not addressing Matt Canada in that regard. 
and keeping him on entirely too long based out of loyalty. So maybe Rooney had to step in for all I know. But in the end, he probably made the job for Mike Tomlin easier because Mike Tomlin knew this was a decision that had to be made. It's just that it was a decision he was reluctant to make because that was a guy he elevated. But I don't I, I don't understand that if you are quick to cut players or let go of players or demote players who are not performing. Why doesn't the same apply to coaches? That's been always my thing, Rob. That's always been my thing, and it's going to stay my right. thing. All right? Do you think, do you think left, which is our next uh, OC? Um, it's a possibility. I don't know whether that's going to happen or not, but I think he should be given consideration. He didn't do a bad job in Tampa. They did win a Super Bowl with him as their offensive coordinator. Why not give him an I opportunity? Agree. Why not? And by the way, hold on for Eric Bieniemy because he might not be long for the Washington job because Magic Johnson is going to compel Josh Harris to make changes with the Washington Commanders. You don't don't expect Ron Rivera to be there next year, and I'm not sure Eric Bieniemy is going to be there either. And if both of them are gone, if I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers, Eric Bieniemy is somebody that I would want in Pittsburgh because I, I just need. But I also it, it may determine whether or not I need a quarterback. I'm not sold on Kenny Pickett, but we were raving about Kenny Pickett last year near the tail end of the mm -hmm. season. So what happened to him this year? It had to have been Matt Canada, and that's where I'm coming yep. from with it. Appreciate the call, my man. Thank you so Thank much. You. I got to get on out of here for the day.